This lesson is on radius and interval of convergence. Well, remember the ratio test. We use the ratio test in determining these radius and intervals of convergence. And the ratio test read the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a of n plus 1 over a of n. And again, three conditions here. If the limit as n approaches infinity of a of n plus 1 over a of n is infinite, then there is only one point of convergence, and that is at 0. And the radius, of course, is 0, 2. So the interval of convergence is at the point 0, and the radius is 0. If the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a of n plus 1 over a of n is equal to 0, then the interval of convergence is over all real numbers, and it is infinite. And the radius of convergence also is infinite. If the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a of n plus 1 over a is between two values, then the interval is between these two values, and we must check the endpoints. And the radius is halfway between these values. So let's go on and do some examples. The first example, we have the sum of x to the n. What is the radius and interval of convergence of this? So we'll use our ratio test, limit as n approaches infinity, of a of n plus 1, which is x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. And we'll take the absolute value of this. And this is equal to absolute value of x. Now this has to be less than 1 if it is to converge. So we can say that x is between negative 1 and 1. This is our interval of convergence, but we have to take it one more step because we have to check the endpoints. So let's go back into our series and check each endpoint. If we put in a negative 1 for the endpoint, we have the series negative 1 to the nth power. And of course, that becomes negative 1, positive 1, negative 1. Of course, we remember from before that this diverges. Let's check the other side, 1. So we'll have the series of 1 to the n. And this also diverges. So our interval actually is x is between negative 1 to 1. If either of these converge, then we would put an equal to at the end point. What is the radius of convergence? It is just 1. Let's go on and look at another example. Determine the interval and radius of convergence of the series n factorial times x to the nth power. So again, we'll do the ratio test. We'll have n plus 1 factorial x to the n plus 1 over n factorial x to the n. We will reduce this and see what we've got. n plus 1 factorial over n factorial is n plus 1. And then x to the n plus 1 over x to the n is x. Now if we put n approaching infinity, we get infinity out of this, which means there is only one point where this converges, and that's when x is equal to 0, which means also that the radius of convergence is 0. Let's go on. What about the series x minus 1 to the nth power over n. Let's try this one. Limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value of x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 times n over x minus 1 to the nth power. And we'll reduce this one to limit as n approaches infinity, absolute value, x minus 1 to the n plus 1, x minus 1 to the n is x minus 1 n over n plus 1 as n approaches infinity is 1. So now we'll have absolute value of x minus 1. And when we do that one, we can say with the ratio test that this has to be less than 1. So now we look at it as x minus 1 is between 1 and negative 1. Solve that. We get x is between 0 and 2. Let's go on and test the endpoints. Put a 0 into our limit, and then put a 2 into our limit. We'll have the series 
And once we put a zero into it, we'll have negative one to the nth power over n. And that is our harmonic series, but it is an alternating harmonic series, so it converges conditionally. So that means at zero, we'll put the equal to on the inequality. And let's try the other side, one to the n over n, and that one diverges. So we do not put an equal to on the two. So our interval is between zero and two, including zero. If we want the radius of convergence, it is one, because we're going from zero to two, halfway is one unit long. Let's go on. Determine the interval and radius of convergence of negative one to the n times x to the n over two to the n times n factorial. Again, we have to use our ratio test. Take out the alternating piece, so we have x to the n plus one over two to the n plus one times n plus one factorial times two to the n, n factorial over x to the n. Clean this up, x to the n plus one, x to the n gives us just an x in that numerator. 2 to the n over 2 to the n plus 1 gives us a 2 in the denominator. n factorial over n plus 1 factorial gives us n plus 1. As we take a limit as n approaches infinity, we see all of this becomes 0. This means our interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity, and our radius of convergence is infinite. So we've checked all kinds so far. We've had one between two numbers. We've had one that went out to infinity and our interval and radius of convergence were zero. And then we have this one, which is infinite. Let's just try another one. Five to the n over n cubed times x to the n. Again, we'll use that ratio test. Five to the n plus one, x to the n plus one over n plus one cubed times n cubed over five to the n, x to the n. Reduce this one, limit as n approaches infinity. Five to the n plus one over five to the n is five. x to the n plus one over x to the n is x. n cubed over n plus one cubed, limit as n approaches infinity makes that one. So we'll have five x. That needs to be less than one. So we'll have five x is between one, and of course on the other side is negative one. Determining x, we get one-fifth on the right-hand side, and we get negative one-fifth on the left-hand side. So we, now we have this interval, which means we must check the endpoints. So let's first check the negative one-fifth endpoint, and we have our series, and if we put x as negative one-fifth, we'll have five to the n, negative one-fifth to the nth power all over n cubed. Well, five to the n times negative one-fifth to the n is a negative one over n cubed, so this converges. So that puts an equal to sign on that side. Try the other one. I think you'll see that both of them will converge. Five to the n times one-fifth to the nth power over n cubed. This means we'll have just one to the nth power. One over n cubed does converge also because of our p-series idea. On this one, the interval of convergence is between negative one-fifth and one-fifth, including both ends. The radius is one-fifth. Let's try one more. Determine the interval and radius of convergence of negative one to the nth power x to the two n plus one over two n plus one factorial. This is actually your sign as a power series. So we will only write in the non-alternating part. So this is x to the two n plus three over two n plus three factorial times two n plus one factorial over x to the two n plus one. Reducing this, x to the two n plus three, x to the two n plus one gives us an x squared. 2n plus 1 factorial over 2n plus 3 factorial actually reduces to 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2 in that denominator. And as n approaches infinity, 
the hold absolute value approaches zero. So the interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity, and the radius is infinite. You will be working with more and more of these sine and cosine and arc tangent, which are the important ones that we work on with Taylor polynomials. This concludes our lesson on intervals and radius of convergence.